Hello, this is uh, Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages. I'm working on my new book. That was this published in 2015. My new book that I'm writing now has yet to be published. It's called The Glass Banking Pyramid, Modern Serfdom, Soft, Soft Fascism. Please like, subscribe, and share, and visit me on Amazon.com. Where my two books are available, Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages. Over at Market Watch, I found the articles over here, and uh, Market Watch asked Mr. Bernanke, the former head of the Federal Reserve Bank, ever since you started bond purchases, Market Watch asked, there has been criticism that the Fed was manipulating rates and there would be held to pay one day. That concern continues. Martin Feldstein recently said that quantitative easing was propping up stock prices and they were bound to fail. How do you respond? Bernanke responds, so first the idea that somehow the Fed is somehow artificially manipulating interest rates is not very logical. You hear that? Not very logical. What the Fed is trying to do to get market interest rates to a level consistent with sustainable growth. You hear that? Sustainable growth. And given the large amount of slack we saw in the last few years, given the fact that fiscal policy was if anything, somewhat restrictive. The interest rates needed to get the economy growing again were quite low or negative. So the Fed was basically only trying to get the interest rates toward or to the level that was consistent with a healthier economy. So I wouldn't call that artificial interest rates. I would call that an attempt to move rates in a direction of where the economy really wanted them to be in some sense. Now, who buys that bogus amount of nonsense? <laughs> bullshit mountain, you know, that's a good term. I can't remember the, the, the liberal guy that said that, bullshit mountain. Well, that applies here to uh, what Bernanke is saying about levels consistent with sustainable growth. First of all, you can't do that in a developed nation like the United States. It's not a growth nation in the first place. The United States is, the, is a developed nation, and you can't grow your way out of debt by having uh, lower negative rates. Makes no sense. So anyway, what else did he say about the economy being healthy? The, the economy is any, anything but healthy if you have quantitative easing and you have lower negative interest rates. This guy is really smoothing it over, and then he, he claims, I wouldn't call that artificial interest rates. Everything about it is artificial. What do you think quantitative easing is? My God, this is why this nation fails. Here's another article um, by Steve Goldstein. It says, when the Fed hikes interest rates, stocks and other assets do surprisingly well. Let's see, shows a chart going back to 1986. And then, well, this isn't much of a, is this the only chart he's going to show? That's it? Well, that's all he's showing here. From 86 to 88, that's not much of a historical chart there, dude. So he says, as the Federal Reserve readies its first interest rate hike cycle in nearly a decade, there may not be too much need to hold your breath. Stocks and other key assets have performed just fine over the previous rate cycles. <laughs> previous rate cycles. Pre previous rate hike cycles. So he goes back all the way to 86 and then he doesn't show the modern data. He goes from 86 and this chart, I, I see it ending at 88, the year of 88. So it's a it's a 86, 87, 88, a three year or four year chart at best. Oh my God. 
See, it says, one unfortunate correlation, however, the last two Fed rate hike cycles preceded stock market crashes. Most pin the blame on the dot-com and housing bubble, bubble bursting. Cycle through to see how various assets have responded to various right rate hike cycles. Oh, okay. I am mistaken. I admit to be mistaken, at least unlike Mr. Bernanke. You can cycle through, so if you click the next button, but I don't see the uh, the level. It's not a very good chart, though, because there's no, you can't see the rates. You can't see the rates. It, it Where's the rates? You don't see what the rates are. Okay, it's this shaded area you can barely see, and it says Fed's tightening cycle, but it doesn't tell you what the rates are. And it shows the market going up, and it shows the market going up here in the shaded area. I guess that's what that is, Fed tightening cycle. You can barely see it. My eyes can barely see it. Fed tightening cycle right here, and then after the Fed tightening cycle stops, then the rates go up. <laughs> Give me a break, man. It's not it's not a very good comparison. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. These guys they just don't know what they're doing, that's what it is. People believe that men like this should be charged of the money supply who represent private banks and the Rothschild family are better qualified to be in charge of your money than you or your government. So we have a crisis in this country as a result of them being in charge of the money supply. And that's the true, that's the true thing that everyone is missing. That's the, that's the true problem is the reason we have so much debt is because the government is relying, relying on debt it is relying on borrowing money from private banks at interest and relying on the easy availability of these loans, putting the government into debt and using the of, of easy available uh, amount of money to be loaned by private banks to engage in the war machine and causing perpetual debt. And here's another article they have, the dangers of getting cocky ahead of the Federal Reserve interest rate decision. Yellen is the new leader of the Rothschild Bank Federal Reserve System. So the, the Fed rates are due at 2 p.m. Eastern today. And it will be followed by a news conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern with Fed Chief Janet Yellen. And then it goes on to say, here's how to tell if the Fed statement is dovish or just cautious. Cautious. <laughs> they don't even use the right term terminality. It's supposed to be hawkish. Hawkish or dovish. If you missed, uh, they can't even use the word uh, hawkish because they're, they're not in a state of being hawkish whatsoever. There's no inflation. There's no reason for their, them to be hawkish by their measures there's no inflation the market is uh, in a deflationary state and here they are talking about raising the rates and you have a stock market that's going sky high because they're the ones that manipulate it housing starts will also be out this morning at 8 30 a.m <laughs> it cracks me up i go to their their, their site and they're so ashamed of the gold price, they actually have an ad that pops up and covers up the oil price. They don't want you to know the oil, oil prices are going down, but the stock markets are going up. Let me see if I can reload that again and show it. I clicked over here to look at the, look at the headlines. I'm loading the page and there's the, where is oil price? Look at that, that's weird. They don't even have the oil price now when I did that. The oil prices were there, now it's just gone. See, there's oil and it disappeared. They don't even want you to see the oil price. Where's the oil price? Why are they hiding the oil price? Now that's weird. You've seen that. I didn't do any magic trick there. That's, that's a, that's a uh, um, you know, the financial news hiding the oil price. 
See, and you're supposed to be able to click on it too. I could click on gold. I could click on all these other indices. I could go over here and look at other indices. I could click on everything but oil, no oil. And look, the ad covers it up. Speaking of oil, Congress reaches deal to lift 40 year ban on oil exports. The measure allowing oil exports is at the center of, the, of a deal that Republican leaders announced late Tuesday on spending and tax le legislation. However, Democrats haven't confirmed the, the agreement. Both the House and the Senate st still must pass it, and President Barack Obama must sign it into law. The deal would lift the ban, a priority for Republicans and the oil industry, and at the same point adopt environmental and renewable measures that Democrats sought. These include extending wind and solar tax credits, reauthorizing for three years for reauthorizing for three years a conservation fund and excluding any measures that block major Obama administration environmental regulations according to a GOP aide. By design or not, the agreement hands the oil industry a long sought victory within days of a major international climate deal that is aimed at sharply reducing emissions from oil and other fuels, a deal opposed by the industry and one that will argu arguably require its cooperation. <laughs> oil reaches deal to lift 40 year ban on oil exports. So it doesn't really tell you much about it, does it? <laughs> Here down in the comment section, this person says, now that there is a world oversupply, 40 years later, exports are okay. Give me a marker and I will write STUPID in capital letters on their collective foreheads. <laughs> Here's another quote, buy high, sell low, nice. Here's another comment, I believe the bill for sale is for the sale of excess oil only. Our debt has cut us in a place, or oh, put us in a place where we need to generate revenue. We have over 100 years of oil in the ground. We will be a we will be on a different energy source before it runs out. So he's saying we have 100 years in the ground, but we can only sell the excess. Back over to the Fed Fed rate decision. It says what's your question for Janet Yellen? I'm looking down here in the comments. It says, how many times in the last 60 days have you talked with a Washington politician and in particular political leader? In particular political leader. How many times in the last 60 days have you talked with a Washington politician and in particular, I guess, I guess he missed a letter there, a political leader. Everyone expects the Fed, Yellen, to raise rates by 20, 0.25 basis points, but can she raise it by an amount below <laughs> below 25? <laughs> that's a, that's the question. That's it. Two questions. I got a question for you, Miss Janet Yellen. Why are you paying? Why does the United States government have to pay? an interest an interest on debt to private banks if we supposedly print our own money why is it that there's interest on debt for the debt of the nation answer that i know i won't get an answer to that one my next question is if you are truly a federal organization, as your name implies, Federal Reserve Bank, why is your establishment on private property? And who really owns the Federal Reserve Bank? Who are its stockholders? Who's getting the dividends? Who's getting, 
Who's getting paid off? Why don't you answer that question, Miss Yellen? Oh, okay, here's the article I was looking for. They didn't edit it. It was just a different article. It says, Bernanke says Fed likely to add negative interest rates to recession-fighting toolkit. See, they're talking about raising the rates, but here's the former chairperson talking about negative rates. The Federal Reserve should consider using negative rates to counter the next serious downturn said former chairman Ben Bernanke in an interview with Market Watch. I think negative rates are something the Fed will and probably should consider if the situation arises. So what's he talking about? If the situation arises. What is he talking about? If the stock, if the stock market starts to sink too fast? Hmm. Here's a little more. Former Fed Vice Chairman Alan Blinder urged the Fed during the financial crisis to set negative interest rates for overnight deposits, essentially charging banks a fee to park funds at the central bank. Blinder urged this would force banks to find more productive uses for money. Bernanke and his colleagues opted not to push interest rates below zero, worried that the cost outweighed the benefits. In particular, there was a concern that money market funds would, wouldn't be able to recover management fees. The scope for negative nominal rates is fairly limited, Ben Bernanke said. But experience in Europe has shown this fear was unfounded. In the region, the European Central Bank, the Swiss, Swiss National Bank, and the Central Bank of Denmark and Sweden have deployed negative rates to some degree. Bernanke also said he was surprised how negative rates have been able to fall in Europe. Bernanke suggested negative rates can't be the Fed's primary tool to combat a recession. Down here in the comments, this guy quotes, negative interest rates, voodoo money, and banking economics, dysfunctional Fed. Another guy quotes, if the value price of money is zero or even negative, then what does that tell you about the value price of everything that, that's measured by money? He answered himself and put deflation. Oh, I'm sorry. They both had the same first name. Someone else answered deflation. I have a different answer for all that, by the way, but you're just going to have to buy my book. I'm Neil Vanderstelt. I've done a lot of research on this. If you want to know better answers to stuff like this, start supporting me and uh, help fund me to develop my next book, The Glass Banking Period, Modern Serfdom, Soft Fascism, by buying my current books that are out, The Global Economic Collapse and the New Dark Ages. Here's another article they published on Market Watch. And it says the, the three scenarios, the dovish hike, the hawkish hike, and the no hike. So the dovish hike scenario, basically it's saying the dovish hike would lead to less pronounced weakness among emerging market currencies in 2016. And then it shows which ones would likely be the ones to outperform the Indian rupee, Indonesian, Indonesian Turkish, in Israeli, Mexico currencies, the hawkish hike. In the end, a dollar rally may sow the seeds of its own destruction as it would make delivery of additional rate hikes increasingly unnecessary. Short term, however, we would not fight dollar rally, HSBC said. No hike, HSBC says how the market would react to this scenario, which has been almost entirely ruled out by Fed Funds Futures Market, is the least clear. In our view, 
it would signal growth concerns in the US and worldwide. HSBC said the most likely outcome would be the dollar weakening against the G10 rivals. The yen would likely outperform while the pound would wilt as many anticipate a similar delay from the Bank of England. The reaction in emerging market space would likely be I'll use the word fork to use a complicated word so you don't need to use English like that. The reaction to emerging market, er, market space would likely be forked as the currencies with stronger external balance sheets, the Singapore dollar, Korean won, new Taiwan dollar, and Israel currency, to name a few, would outperform their less secure peers. The Fed's decision, okay, we know what that is. Let's see if there are any comments. Nope, no meaningful comments. Uh, this one says the Fed has to raise rates tomorrow if they are at all influenced by the stock market. If they're smart, they'll raise the rate slightly with a dovish bend. Um, I understand what dovish is, but just to let anyone know uh, listening to this, dovish would mean that they would be um, basically not worried about inflation. Over at my uh, blog spot, I have a feed. Uh, my blog spot is economicdarkages.blogspot.com. Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages by Neil Vanderstelt. And uh, down here at the bottom is where all my feeds are. It includes uh, Market Watch, Charles Hughes Smith, Peter Schiff, um, Seeking Al Alpha, Zero Hedge, Max Kaiser, 24HourGold.com, Forks art articles from Seeking Alpha. I guess I already mentioned that. So this is uh, how I scan through the news sometimes. I guess, I guess I could add Yahoo if I wanted to, but I got quite a few here already that gives me enough info. Charles Hughes Smith, last article, says there's no upside left. And then he has another article, why has the labor participation, participation rate plunged? Well, I'll answer that. The real unemployment is over 20%. So that's why the labor participation rate is going down. <laughs> Forex articles from Seeking Alpha. Fee Fi Fo Fed. <laughs> Here's another one. Sounds interesting. Impacts of the Yuan's inclusion in the SDR's currency basket. Well, the news just doesn't look all that exciting. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Neil Vanderstelt reporting for the day of 12-16-2015, December 16, 2015. Have a good day.